What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Dev Hall. We back and we live for episode 10, man. Y'all already know, where should we begin? You know, a lot of different people been asking me a lot. They go, Dev, when are you going to have different artists on your show? When are you going to have, you know, entrepreneurs, business owners, things in that sort? You know, the first interview I ever had, I had, a biz- I had an artist um, by the name of Billy Joe. Um, she was a painter from Egg Harbor, New Jersey. And now I have the opportunity to interview Ivan Taki. He's an interv- he's a artist from Philadelphia. And um, you're gonna have some type of insight of who he is in the journey of an artist and the type of work he's doing today in 2019. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce my special guest of the Dad Paul Show, episode 10, Ivan Taiki. What's up, bro? What's, What's up? How you doing, man? All right. Yo, man, it's, I finally have the chance to interview you, man. Been some time over a year. Um, I wanted to interview you with season one at my house on the couch, but um, I've been waiting to expand for my show, and um, we are here today, man. You know, I see you working on a mural in the background. Um, for We're actually working right now, working on a project with Foot Locker. Um, it's a huge mural um, for the 69th Street location. Okay. Very excited to do this project. It's, uh, it's my hometown area. It's where I used to take on my little Yamins back in the day in high school, middle right. school. Uh, my little dates and stuff. So it's a good area that I'm actually proud to be able to put post up one of my artworks. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, you know, just something proud for my kids to be able to say, damn, that's daddy's artwork up there. So um, that's where I'm at right now. I got four days to finish this job. So I've been here nonstop every day. So just, you know, grinding it out. Now, how long have you been doing murals around the city of Philadelphia? A lot of people um, don't notice, but I've been doing murals for the past uh, six to eight years, I guess. Okay. Um, I'm pretty well known for the uh, the prom mural I did for the uh, Philly to Dubai, and then um, we followed back up with um, the Black Panther right. uh, prom mural. I did that. Shout out to my homie, um, Country Cooking. That's my that's my love right there. It's my boo. You right. know what I mean, Sorry. she ghetto as shit, but that, you know she real as she real as shit, and she a real she a real nigga too. So she like definitely like you know. Somebody I look up to her and um, she's she a street, you know what I'm saying? You gotta respect her though. So anytime she called me and said, yo, I need you to do this, I'm here to look out, you know what I mean? Right. Now coming from the streets of Philadelphia, <clears throat> now what inspired you to be an artist? Because, you know, a lot of people say you need to be a rapper, you need to be a basketball player, a uh, football player, whatever, things in that sort. Well, what, really what inspired you? me to be an artist was all that shit you just said, I was right. terrible at. I mean, I can't play ball, I don't know how to play football. Right. I can't sing for shit, you know. I tried selling drugs. I, I was terrible at that shit. Um, so I mean, I'm like shit, you know. I have four older sisters, and they all always, always want to do girl shit, and I was tired of them calling me a. Right. I'm like, I ain't no, you know what I'm saying? But you know, I'm not gonna do the girly stuff. So let me find something I like to do. Right. So I like painting and drawing, mm-hmm. and I was actually good at it, you know. Some girl in kindergarten, she said, "Damn, you can draw real good. Can you draw me?" Okay. And I'm like, damn, you know, if bitches gonna like me for drawing, I might as well get good at this. <laughs> right. And that's what happened. Right. Now, <clears throat> by you being, <laughs> that's funny, so you just said all that. Now, by you being an artist, uh, what really, like, when I'm trying to figure out what inspired you, like, you, I listened to a lot of your interviews saying that you came from poverty, you really didn't um, have that much growing up, the name brand sneaks, things of that sort. Um, I th- I'm pretty sure a lot of us can relate to that. Uh, but as far as it, making some type of, you receiving some type of income from it? Like what really made um, you say, I'm gonna take this serious? Because I heard that you said you gathered 32,000 or saved that yeah. up from doing different painting competitions. Yeah. So a lot of people don't notice, but I saved up about 32 grand by the time high school came about. And that was from doing various things, from being a hustler, watching my parents hustle and learn how to take a product, flip it, and make it, that product your own and then reselling it to make a make a, a profit margin. And uh, I mean, I've, I used to do things from like, you know, walking people, walking old people with their groceries, making a dollar or two there, bagging up people's groceries to pumping gas, right. all kinds of little small stuff just so I could be able to buy art supplies. Once I bought art supplies, I'm not talking about to do a painting or nothing. I'm talking about just a paintbrush and a bucket of paint. Right. I would knock on people's doors and ask them to paint their fences. Back okay. in the day, everybody had like gated fences outside their house and I would paint their fence for $20, $25. Okay. I would take that $20, $25 and then I would buy art supplies to do canvas pieces and stuff and that's when I started getting 50 to to $100. And every time I took something smaller and as I got gradually got bigger, I started making more money at it. And then, you know, later on in life, me and my boy Don, he already had a clothing company that he was working on. He asked me to join him. Right. I joined the clothing company with him and, uh, you know, that's how we 
he started Donation, and we was doing Donation together in the basement at the same time Mesquine was doing Mesquine. Right. And, uh, you know, we got a lot of name in the hood for, 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 you know, hood designers or hood artists and just crafting and changing up stuff and just when somebody wanted something funky and something cool to wear for the club, right. you know, and you couldn't just buy it off the shelf or you didn't want to afford that, mis you know, uh, Moschino shirt or Versace shirt, back then that shit was like, you could spend twelve fifty to twenty five hundred dollars for one shirt, right. and niggas had that kind of money back then. So they would come to us. You still get some exclusive, but you wouldn't spend that much. Okay. But you still look like the man in the club. So we would make our money. We would hustle our shit all throughout the week, and then go to the barber shop, hair salons, you know, all the places where drug dealers was at, and then try to sell our shit to them out of our trunk. Okay. And that's how we made our money. And then we got a name for ourselves. Once you get a name for yourself in the hood, that's all you really need. Once you get a name for yourself in the hood, you can do whatever fuck you want. You can get bitches. You can, you know, you can walk into any clubs. You can do whatever you want. But you got to get a name for yourself right. for whatever it is that you do. And we got our name for ourselves being hustlers and being artists and being, you know, creatives and stuff. Right. <laughs> now, as far as you doing that, you had a clothing line with your friend Don, your best man. Um, I heard you saying before. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> Don Nation. How did y'all get in positions to be in front of people like Jay-Z? Because you heard, I heard that you had him. Well, I walked up to Jay-Z, slapped that nigga, and was like, yo, nigga, where this shit? Right. All right, then it's the real story. Right, right. <laughs> no, nah, but like, see, the thing is, a lot of people understand, like, in the music industry, there's steps to get to where you need to get to. So anybody that's wearing clothes in a music video, there's a stylist, there's a designer, and then there's a, even a producer. Right. And they have the, the power even over the artists. Before you even get to the artist, you gotta go through these three people or whatever. You know, and they can say, yo, that's hot, you should wear that in it. Or that color matches the background, wear that shirt. Right. Or this is the most popping things, right? Nobody's wearing button-ups no more, or nobody's wearing thermals no more, nobody's wearing t-shirts no more, nobody's wearing jerseys no more. You wanna be ahead of the game, this is the new shit you need to wear. Okay. You know, I remember it was the time when Jay-Z came out with the S dot uh, sneakers. It was like a remake of the Gucci joints. And Donnie came up with this cool, crazy design. Like, yo, we just take them S dot sneakers and put them on a shirt so niggas got something to wear with them joints. Mm -hmm. And it was like, you could wear a plain white tee or you could wear the funked out S dot shirt that, that we made. You right. know what I'm saying? So niggas like, nah, give me the S dot shirt. Right. So you can't have that shirt for $25. That shirt got to be a bean 50. Right. Even though it's a t-shirt, it's right. like, yo, it's a bean 50 shirt, nigga. Uh -huh. And that shirt with the S dots was a fly leg, you got some pussy that night. You know what I mean? So guys looked at their outfits like, if I can get some pussy off of this outfit, then that's a good shirt. I'm gonna get five more of those shirts. Right. You know what I'm saying? So we was the dudes that made corny niggas look fly. <laughs> so then we became the fly niggas. Right. If that makes but sense. God, nah, I get what you're saying. People paid us for our creativity. We might have been, hey, y'all might make fun of creative nerds and artist boys and stuff like that, but without us, Fly niggas don't exist. Right. So y'all need us nerdy ass artsy boys to make you corny niggas exist, right. you know? Right, I understand what you're saying. Now, when I, when I wanted to get back into the artistry, uh, the art industry, um, now you basically, like I said, you met Jay-Z or met the, uh, not met Jay-Z, you met the um, stylist and mm -hmm. things and that sort. Competition had um, approached LRG. I noticed that you said that they kind of was trying to like steal your designs or in a sense trying to beat y'all to a punch. Can you elaborate on that? I wouldn't say LG exactly store designs, but like if I'm in my grandma's basement, come up with a cool ass idea, I'm like, yo, this is around the time of grunge and skeleton shit. If you had anything with skeletons or bones and shit on it, it was right. fly. Or anything with stones or like gemstones or like diamond looking shit, it mm -hmm. was fly. Right. So we found ways to keep being creative with that same idea. And like, I remember one time I made some jeans that had like the skeleton bones in the back of the jeans. Everybody like, yo, that's hot. But Evizu was like a top gene at the time with the Evizu logo. So I said, let me mix those two things together and put the skeleton bones in the back of the jeans like the Evizu jeans. And then we did a hoodie where we did a skeleton on the hoodie of the joint and then put the skull on the side of the joint. Now, LRG somehow might have seen this image and because they're LRG and they have a bigger budget, bigger demographic, they have stores and stuff. Once they take that image and put it on a shirt and mass produce it, they don't have to give props to whoever they saw the idea from or whoever they got the, the, the image from to say this is a cool idea. No matter, so, if L no matter if you have an LLC or not? Yeah, but we was niggas. We was young niggas. We ain't never take that image and say, I'm a patent this. Right. And don't say, they see it. They say, that's hot. Steal it. Switch it up a little bit. And you don't own it no more. They right. own it now. Right. And then right. they make fucking millions and millions of dollars with that hoodie idea concept that we made up. I mean, honestly, there was a time when like tie-dye shit was real popping. And a lot of people don't know that.
I was the reason why Philadelphia was rocking a tie-dye shit. You know what I'm saying? And I learned that shit from this Asian bitch I was fucking with in, in, in college. Right. I was fucking this Asian bitch in college, and she was tie-dyeing some shit for her project. I was like, yo, how you tie-dye that? She was like, <laughs> oh, I went to write. I went to Rite Aid and bought this box of, of tie-dye. I was like, yo, show me how to do that shit. So she showed me how to do that shit. I took that same idea and said, yo, I'm going to take this idea and tie-dye these hoodies and tie-dye these shirts for the niggas in the hood to wear them. And once we had the tie-dye shit done, niggas was like, yo, that's fire. Right. And then we were selling that shit. Then, you know, other companies, I feel like other companies saw the shit that we was doing and was like, damn, the niggas in the hood is wearing this. Let's start mass producing this shit. You and then though? we ain't get the props for that shit either. Now, by you doing that, did, what made you make that transition to take art series full time from the clothing line? From you being a part of a clothing line? Or are you still a part of that? It, a line? lot of things to dealt with the economy. Back in, in the economy before Bush fucked it up, motherfucking people had money to blow on shit like clothes and stuff like that. You right. know, drugs was still popping, the drug deals was making good money. And, you know, they were spending their money on their bitches and buying them Louis Vuitton and Gucci and, and shit like people was enjoying life. But when the economy hit, the money that they had was like, you know, people wasn't spending that kind of money on, on dumb shit. They had to spend their money, hold it tight for the important shit. So then once the economy took that hit, it was like we took a hit too. Because people was like, nah, instead of buying $400 pair of jeans, I'm going to go to H&M and give me some $30 jeans. Right. Keep it cool. You know what I mean? Right. So like I got to move with how, how the economy moved. And then once the economy got back up with George Bush being out and then Obama came back in, mm -hmm. economy slowly started getting back up. Niggas started spending their money on dumb shit again because we had more money. Mm -hmm. So it's like you got to kind of move with how the economy move if you want to be able to uh, market your brand and sell, make money off people spending dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like clothes is not important. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Now you have different studios, I know. This yeah. is just one of your studios. And the reason I asked about the art because you seem like you, you take this art shit real serious. You know, you have... I don't know how many studios you have, but I know this is one of your studios. You do portraits, you do morals, um, and I'm trying to figure out, like, like, is this something that you really are devoted to 100% because it's Hell like yeah. you're a freelance artist, you know, and it's like, well, like first why and foremost, not take a nine to five? You take, first and foremost, you know before I'm an artist, I'm a hustler. And people take the word hustler and look at it as a, a negative right, thing. Right, right. I feel that. I and, feel you know, Soldier Boy way. recently said right. uh, something about him. Uh, the, the, the female that was uh, questioning him said, why do you got so, so many, many businesses. jobs? So oh, many yeah, businesses. Right. And he was like, why don't you? Right. You know what I'm saying? The reason why I have so many different businesses is because if I have seven to ten different businesses, and we all know that millionaires, you have to have seven to ten different incomes coming in. We all should know that. It's right. just like a given. If you got seven different different incomes coming in, if one is booming and doing really well, you still got six other ones that's still making some kind of money. In business, you have to look at it as everything has a start date and an end date. Right. You know, I don't know when the fuck I'm gonna be corny and nobody gonna wanna buy paintings again. I don't know when somebody gonna wanna stop doing events and renting my studio spaces out. Right. I don't know when somebody gonna say, oh, he's corny, I don't want him doing murals no more. Right. I got seven to 10 different ways I make money. Right. So that way, if something don't work anymore, I'm not. I'm gonna say, okay, that business is done. I wash my hands with it, and it's over. But I still got six to eight different other, you know, ways I'm making money. So yeah. I'm never gonna be broke. Right. I'm never gonna be fucked up because I don't. I can't see all ten of my businesses crashing at one time. Right. You know, that's really fucked up if that happens. But for the most part, it doesn't really work that way. You know, and if you gotta kind of fill your business out to say, hey, this is coming closer to its ending date. Let me start weaning out from that shit and focusing more on the things that are thriving okay you know and and most people have one source of income and when they get fired from their job People they ready to kill themselves right, right. it's like yo dog don't kill yourself you don't got no other money coming from no other place no that's, that's right. you know so it's like you gotta have money coming from seven to ten different places even if it's if you're selling some bullshit online t-shirts or some shit and you only selling maybe two a week at twenty dollars a piece that's forty dollars a week that's $160 a month that you're making, that could pay your insurance for your car. I don't know what the fuck it could pay, but let's just use that for instance. You know what I mean? And let's say them two shirts go to eight shirts a week, and then from eight shirts to 12 shirts a week to 25 shirts a week, you can quit one of them other jobs that you really ain't need. Now you can invest more in the shirt shit, and you're selling more quantity of that. So it's like you got to be able to juggle six to eight different things so that when one starts popping in and doing a Watuti, you can really thrive off of that. You know what I mean? That so I sense. love having more than one business because I don't ever want to fucking be broke. I don't see it happening. I can't be broke. Right. That's how I look at it. 
I feel as though a lot of people don't have no resources to do that or to generate their business. A lot of people are scared or I feel as though a lot of people don't know how to do certain things outside of the norm. Well, the biggest problem, society. the they biggest society. problem of that situation that you just said was the fear. Nothing else mattered but that fear that right. you just said. This, right. That fear and them being scared was their biggest problem. Right. Because a lot of shit don't work in my favor. Like right now, I'm trying to put this fucking mural up in the snow saying, kiss his ass. <laughs> and it's like, you know, I can't fuck with Mother Nature. If that bitch wants it to snow today, it's going to snow. Right. It's, it's fucking my money up a teeny bit, but when that bitch stops snowing, I'm going to go out there and put the mural up. You right. know what I'm saying? I don't let nothing get in my way. Not no person, not no attitudes, not no bitches, not no bills. I don't let nothing get in my way because my main focus is winning and getting a fucking job done. You right. know what I'm saying? Right, gotcha. And if you got to have that kind of hunger, that kind of mindset to win. Because everybody want to win and they don't see the lavish shit, but they don't see the failures. Everybody's so scared to fucking fail mm -hmm. and to be seen as, as that didn't work that they don't even try no more because right. they're so scared of failing. You need to fail. In I love failing because that failure, that moment of failure, a lesson. that shit makes you go hard and be like, fuck, I failed. I got to fix this shit right. because that didn't feel good. Right. You know what fucked it up? You ever see like a bunch of kids in a, like a little league and the team that didn't win still get an award? Mm -hmm. Fuck them, yo. They failed. They shouldn't get shit. Right. Let them niggas know what it feels like to lose. It's cool to lose. It's right. Right, right. Let right. them little niggas know what it's like to lose right, right. because that shit going to make them be like, fuck, I failed. We right. should have worked harder. We should have been in the gym. Right. Next year, I'm going to bust my ass so I can win that trophy so I can feel like the winners over there. Them niggas is winners. Them, them, them motherfuckers with the trophy, the them trophy. niggas right. is winners. Because right. right. when we watch the championship games and let's say LeBron, when LeBron lost to the... Uh, Warriors, the last. Ain't nobody give him no medal. Ain't nobody give right? LeBron no <laughs> pat on his back. Hey, right. LeBron, good, good job, job. Right, second right. place, nigga. Right, right. You did a good. Right. Fuck you, LeBron. You lost. Right. You the first loser, nigga. You right. lost. Right. Bust your ass harder next year. When you go to play the Warriors again, you can win. Right. Put your team together, build a massive team, right. and win next time. Right. That losing shit is necessary to be a real fucking winner. Right. I agree. We all look at Floyd Mayweather and see that this nigga never got knocked the fuck out or never lost. Right. That shit is not fucking real. <laughs> Every time that nigga fight, he got the same fucking, um, judges, uh, uh, judges. the same judges that's and the fact. same that's fucking, um, uh, what's the, the word? The, the same ref. ref. No, that's a fact. It's the that's same ref, fact. but fuck that's Floyd, dog. That's like, he got people believing that it's okay to only win. That's a fact. That shit is not decent and not cool. <laughs> I respect Muhammad Ali over Floyd any fucking day. That's you know why? Because when Muhammad Ali failed or when he got knocked the fuck out or when he, he didn't do it often, don't no. get me wrong. No, no, no. He still was a winner to me. You know what I'm saying? I respect fighters that was fighting champions. Yeah, man, like, that's what before a real before. champion is. I, I mean, the biggest comeback right now is Meek Mill. You know what I mean? And me and Meek ain't best friends or no shit like that, but I respect the nigga right. being from Philly and shit because he took a bunch of fucking L's. Right. Like, Drake bodied that nigga in a rap battle, and I don't give a fuck who hear this shit. Right. Drake bodied Meek in a fucking uh, rap battle. Meek didn't even come back at him the right way. And the now time, look, right. at, look at Meek right now. Right. He got rid of that tell. fucking parasite ass bitch Nikki. Right. You know what I'm saying? Fact. He got rid of the <laughs> parasite ass niggas in his crew that can't fucking rap right. or just in the fucking way. Right. And he did some real shit. Right. And he, he he got locked the fuck up, which was another fucking L for popping Willies in New York. Mm -hmm. He took his ass, calmed the fuck down, grew the fuck up. And now he making big boy decisions with and big boy with billionaires. Right. Like ne Meek needed to go to fuck to jail. No, that's facts. Meek real shit. Meek needed to go to jail because. He wouldn't respect this fucking win right now if he ain't take all them fucking losses. Mm. Philly proud of Meek now. Right. We watched him grow the fuck up. Right. Because when he's Twitter fingers, he still be writing little dumb shit on Twitter <laughs> now. But when he be all that in his feelings and writing dumb shit and, yeah. and not taking care of his business and popping pills and shit like that, we like, yo, nigga, you representing Philly over here. Right. We don't do that dumb shit. We grown ass men over here. Right, right. So when Meek grew the fuck up and started making better choices, got rid of that parasite ass bitch, I don't give a fuck what nobody say. Nikki's She's a parasite, bro. Oh, these Nikki fans gonna be mad. I don't as give shit, a yo. fuck about they these hoes. They be hoes. on my ass. They be Listen, on my, man, they be on my ass, shit. yo. Listen, man. <laughs> fuck all that shit, man. My man. As <laughs> soon as he got rid of her, life was so much better easy. for it's him. It's easy for him, right? You know what I'm saying? Right. He made up with Drake. They was only beefing about hoes in the first place. They right. both beefing about the fact that they both fuck Rihanna. They both fuck Nikki. Right. They all beefing about some bitches. Y'all niggas need to chill with that shit and get money. Right. These hoes don't belong to none of us, man. Right. 
What, if he fucking her, he fucking her, she fucking her. If I die, she fucking me. Once I die, she gonna fuck the next nigga. Like, <laughs> what fuck I give a fuck about what her feelings are? If she gonna just fuck another nigga who pop No, that's true. No, I, I say nothing crazy. No, no, no. You saying some real shit though. You saying some real shit. But as far as artists, you mentioned like artists is like uh, Drake, um, Nicki, Meek. You know things in that sort. Like what artists have you worked with in the past? Like that's the, who's the biggest artist that you worked with? Um, if you must say. Man, I don't even be caring about that shit no more, man. I, I worked with a lot of artists. I mean, for those, for those that's interested, I, I mean, you really don't give a damn. But like, if you get, if you can just sit here, all right, and I'm like, gonna talk damn, about y'all. the ones that mean more to me. Yeah. Cause I don't really give a fuck about these new artists and shit. They yeah, don't respect yeah. us because they're so into the Instagram world. Like, right. I worked with Bill Cosby. Right. A couple weeks before that scandal came out, mm. and I had 20 minute, 15, 20 minute conversation with him on a, on the couch. Just talking about life and what to expect becoming famous and becoming into this world of social media and everybody having a fucking comment about what you're doing. <laughs> Meanwhile, you're doing your thing, you're growing, you're grinding. All these nobody motherfuckers watching the tube right now got something to say about how you could have did this better, X, Y, and Z, when you're watching my life. I'm not giving a fuck or watching yours. There's niggas that's doing great things that don't even read the fucking comments. When I post a picture, I, you know, I don't even read the comments no more. Right. Because that takes you off your focus. Mm. I don't care what nobody think. I posted the picture. You came to my picture to like it. You came to my picture you to comment. comment. Right. I'm winning. Because right. normally people I don't give a fuck about, I don't follow them enough to even know that they posted the shit that they're posting. Right. So why would I care to right. even comment right. about some shit I don't even know about? Right. It, it is you know, funny. that's the problem. Like... If something bothers you or it doesn't have nothing to do with you, you know, we're, we learn to just really just turn the fuck away. Walk away from it and don't support it. That's it. We don't got to open your fucking mouth and comment every time somebody say or do something that doesn't agree with you. We're human beings. We're supposed to not like every single thing. They need the not like button on this thing. When somebody puts something dumb, like, hey, that's stupid. I don't like it. Just I don't need like, a comment, but right. no, not like. Right. I you agree. know, we're so fixated with everybody having to like everything we do that we start doing things to please people instead of doing things to please ourselves first right i can definitely understand that now as far as the um industry goes uh do you, now you're an old head i'm gonna definitely say that i'm old head yeah, I'm, i ain't gonna i ain't gonna i ain't gonna, I ain't gonna disrespect I'm you though cool you're, old, you're old head though you know i gotta respect my elders and shit i ain't gonna say he old, old head but like that but as far as that goes do you feel like the the new artists as far as in the um art industry do you feel like the Philadelphia, are they putting on for Philly, or do you feel as though they have, we have a lot of artists on up, up in, um... Now, you talking about artists, you talking about artists as in, like... like painters, not oh, rappers you talking about painters, like okay. We're going to talk, talk about the music industry, too, because, you yeah. know, you, I mean, you, the, I, you the boy on the ground to me, you know. Like, appreciate I, I don't that, mean bro. to say too much, but, yeah, um, you know. Now, as far as artists that's in the field that I'm in, you know, I have my, uh... It's just a lot to say about that. I'm trying to boil it down to so it can be simplified. You know, you got a lot of artists that you can make art that's for you, it's something that you love doing and it's expressing yourself. Mm -hmm. There's some people that make art for the likes. I know how to make art for the likes because people love, like the, my followers, they love seeing black power, black right. women winning, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> a flower growing out of the, the woman's vagina to represent the earth. Mm -hmm. And all that fucking, you know, black power shit and beautiful black woman stuff. It's amazing, it's beautiful and stuff like that, but like, I know that that's gonna get a lot of likes if I make a painting like that. Right. But is that really me? I know also know that sometimes people use their body in the image of themselves rather than the actual artwork. So I see a lot of bitches or females, excuse me for the bitches, um, I was drinking <laughs> a little bit, but I see a lot of females that might put a picture that might be trash or a painting that might not be as good mm -hmm. But the fact that their ass is fat as shit, or their titties is damn near fucking oozing out their shit, it's like, nigga, am I looking at the painting you posted or that fat ass? Yeah. If I'm gonna like this picture you gonna get or that fat like ass, you're gonna get like, 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 like. But on that painting, I'm gonna just scroll past that trash. You know what I'm saying? So now it's like, it becomes about the image of the artist rather than the actual artist. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, some motherfuckers like me because they like that I talk like this, they like that I could be 100, right. whatever. And that's mm -hmm. cool, you know what I'm saying? Some, actually, people really like my work. Some right. people might say my work is fucking trash mm -hmm. and, and it don't have no meanings to it. I don't give a fuck. I'm still getting paid regardless of what the people think, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, a lot of people, the image of the world right now, and this goes for music, for, for, for hip hop, whatever, it's more so image has gone like this 
and quality has gone like that. Right. Back in the days, to be quality was like this first, and if it was an ugly motherfucker, like all right, we can make this ugly motherfucker look cool. Mm-hmm. Let's build his image up. But this nigga can sing. You know what I'm saying? It's right. not like that no more. It's like, damn, this nigga image is crazy. Look, look at six nine. Mm-hmm. He got the colorful rainbow hair. He got the number six nine tatted all, all over his it. fucking body. Right. He got all this gangster rah 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 shit. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But his raps, I mean, like, I mean, he had a couple of Art Jones. You know what I'm saying? But like, the rapper, right? I agree. I don't want to hear no whole six nine album. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And a lot of these people, they're like, yo, if I can get views, I can get people to look at me. I can get people to say this is a crazy ass nigga. I'll get money from it. But so they focus so more media. off of, they focus more for the image versus focusing on the craft the and right. the content of, right. their, of their artistry. Right. I agree with you saying. Now, it's, um, <clears throat> I wanted to get into that. Now, is there any competition in, competition, the, city, in the city or just in the To game, be honest with you, I feel like the best artists in the city, no one knows them. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I like a few artists that are not as popular, but they get paid way more money than me to do artwork. <laughs> and and they're younger than me, too. Mm-hmm. It's this one artist named Nosego. Mm-hmm. Nosego is a dope-ass artist. Um, we actually went to high school together. He was an underclassman. Uh, Gabe, you know Nosego, right? What's his real name? <laughs> I don't know his real name either, but he went to, he went to Kappa uh-huh. High School. Shout out to Kappa, all my Kappa alumni. Right. And uh, the nigga, he does amazing artwork. It's like futuristic shit. He always got some animal shit doing some stuff. He got a piece of artwork on uh, Federal Donuts. And he okay. getting... Oh, on the side? On yeah, the, on yeah, the, yeah on the side of it. That's he all, getting like 10000 and up for, for, for murals. And then he gets national murals. And he gets over three to 5000 per like on each painting that he posts. And a lot of people really like, don't even know who he <laughs> is. You know what I'm saying? But then you got other artists from Philadelphia, King Saladin, shout out to him. Mm-hmm. You got um, Billy Joe, shout out to her. Mm-hmm. You got um, uh, Melissa, uh, Mel- uh, Mel is a muse. Mm-hmm. You got uh, Chuck Styles. You got a lot of, uh, um, what's up, Justin Wildington, you know, Spectre Art. You got a lot of dope ass other artists that are popular. Mm-hmm. Not saying discrediting their work on that, but because they're popular, it's harder sometimes when you to see somebody who's popular, I'm considered popular, right. versus somebody like my man Nosego, who's not as popular in the same world we're in. I get what you're saying. You know, but he's making way more money than probably all of us. I feel like I feel as though some people popular in the right people's eyes, if that makes sense. You yeah. Know, like just like you just said, like he may be making more money. He's got a different same. demographic of people that yeah. follow him and, okay. and like his stuff. And everybody, you, I mean, listen, I ain't hating on none of those people names that I just said right. because they got to do what works in their in their realm to make their money. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And if that's their thing that works for them, then that's their thing that works for them. Like me, I don't take my shirt off or show my muscles because I ain't got none. Mm-hmm. I'm a fat, I'm a little fat nigga sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna work what works for me. You know what I mean? Now I got a beard and stuff and I still, I had a company come to me and was like, hey, we love your beard. Um, can you rock our beard cream? We'll give you X amount of do- dollars for this shit. Mm-hmm. You know, and I make money off of that shit. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So whatever works for them, if they can get private checks and, and companies to sponsor them because of that thing that works for them and their image, then by all means, that's cool. You right. know what I'm saying? But the artistry has changed now. It's not about that anymore because companies know that we don't need to pay the big dollars to commercials now. We can get these small influencers to be able to get their demographic and their network to be able to push our product and we can pay them smaller checks versus paying commercials and big companies to do the same shit. Now... <clears throat> I want to get to this question for the viewers, because a lot of people been, I know there's a lot of people in this DM, you know. So I'm going to get this one question out the way. All holes. Ah, yeah. It's that like, too. no. That too. That too. <laughs> that too. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. That too. But uh, like when people be seeing your portraits, they, I'm pretty sure a lot of people curious, like, what is your starting price? Or it really, de- it really um, depends on the size of people the People always ask me this. How do, I, how do they charge for their work? And I'm just like, listen, I don't know you. I don't know what the fuck you need to charge for your work. <laughs> so don't ask me that. Don't ask me that question. How much should you charge for your work? Right. I don't know you. I don't know how long you've been painting. I don't know how much you spend on your materials. I don't know how long you spend on your art. Right. For me to tell you what you're supposed to charge for your shit. Mm-hmm. I know for me, I like this. I know that my time, I want to get paid $500 and up for anything I fucking do. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I got a shitload of bills. Like my bills are has commas in it. You know, I'm not gonna get into details, but right. I have a lot of bills from my studios, my kids, I have four kids, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like I have a lot of bills, so I know that I'm not gonna waste my time doing some shit for $125 or $200 right. that is gonna cost me more than an hour. I base my hourly time on, in my experience, 
into the budget of whatever I'm doing, if that makes sense. Let me so, like, normally per hour, I need 250 per hour because I can do a painting in two hours, honestly. Oh, yeah. But some people are like, damn, you don't do it in two hours. Why well, I got to pay you so much? It's like, nigga, you want it to look good? Okay, you don't to do worry it. about how long it took me to do it. Do you want it to fucking look good? Right. It took me 30 years to learn how to make this two hour painting look like a fucking masterpiece and right. make you happy. So, don't worry about that. I'm an expert at it. Right. 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 Give, me, give me my coins as, as much as I need for whatever it's I can do. It's not going to look like I did it in two hours. At the end of the day, I, I two hours of them and two hours to me is two different two hours. You know right. what I'm saying? Two hours to me is a long time to do a painting. Now, what do you enjoy doing more if you had to choose? I enjoy making people happy. Mm. So, so whenever I make a painting and make that motherfucker happy, cool. Now traveling, <clears throat> Art Basil. What's the biggest show you have done? Um, I did, I, art, I, did art Basel, I did Art, art Basel this year uh, at uh, Scope Art Show, and it was cool. You know, uh, shit was mad expensive though. The booth, the booth, thirteen grand. You know, a lot of people don't know that that booth is thirteen thousand dollars. I didn't pay for it by myself. I had two other artists that I, I respect, Serena, uh, Miss Passion Art, and then I gave Tiberino a part of it too. And we split the booth fee three ways, um, which is still a hefty uh, fee. You still got to pay for your ho your your common hotel wherever you're staying at, right. your rental car, your food to eat. Right. You know, if you got staff that's helping you your groceries, your airfare, and then even delivering your artwork. Delivering our artwork was $1,300 to deliver it there and deliver it back. Mm. You know, it's a lot of shit. So that, that, that tab ended up going up to 20 racks. You know what I mean? And you in hopes try to sell a piece or sell a painting. To get something. Or even if you don't sell a painting, which we didn't do, we made some great contacts, some great relationships, and to be able to experience a show like that was, you know, was amazing. And not only that, I have that show underneath my belt. To be able to get to the point where you're selling million dollar paintings, you gotta have certain shows underneath your belt. Motherfucker ain't gonna just give you a million dollars for a piece of artwork. Everybody thinks that, oh, Diddy just bought a painting for $29 million. How can I get my painting to Diddy so I can sell it to him for $29 million? Right. First and foremost, that artist that sold it to Diddy for $29 million has a great rap sheet of who he sold artwork to, mm -hmm. where his artwork has been shown at. Mm -hmm. 15 or 20 different types of art Basel shows. You know right. what I'm saying? All that shit is gonna determine what makes this person worth their value to be able to sell shit at $29 million? Right. Everybody's looking for that instant gratification to be able to be a millionaire artist, but you ain't putting the fucking work in or the time or even earning the respect in the art community. So how can you do that? Now, what advice would you give a, a young artist that like looks up to you or that's really trying sell to- Sell coke, serious? man. Like seriously, sell coke. No, I'm joking. <laughs> um, you gotta invest in yourself, love what you do. Anytime somebody say no, Look for 50 more yeses to come later on. Every time somebody say no, and don't ever stop when they tell you no, because all the no's just fuel me to be a better artist, fuel me to get my shit together and not give up. You know what I'm saying? If you can intern or work for somebody, I got my man Malcolm back here. He ain't getting paid right now, but the knowledge that he's getting just by sit, being around me, talking to me, hearing me talk right now, he's soaking it all in. That shit is fucking priceless. Stop looking for money every time you wanna be able to be around somebody that you already gonna get some information from. The information costs more than the fucking money. Thanks. You know what I'm saying? You gotta know your worth. If you ain't there yet and you trying to learn some shit, be around those motherfuckers that you are inspired by. Stop trying to look for money right now. You're nothing, you're nobody right now. You need to fucking get the knowledge and the information soaked into your fucking brain so you can do it by yourself. Money will come later. Love the shit you do. And ask yourself this, would you do this shit for free? All the shit I do right now, painting and shit like that, I would do it for fucking free. I'm just gonna make these motherfuckers pay my bills. That's why I paint. And that's it. Straight like that. Well, I really don't want to take up too much of his time because you gotta get back. You gotta get back to your job. Fuck this paint. Let's go. You get... It's like, no, I'll fuck with you. I was about to say, you gotta get back <laughs> I do to gotta get job. back. But, but thanks you know. everybody for watching. Thanks for, for tuning in. Dev Show. I'm I definitely gonna check it, it out, man. You're thanks already. for coming to the studio. Bring your staff here and make sure everybody's cool. Um, anybody that's got any more questions, don't shoot me a DM this week. Shoot me one next week. Maybe I'll answer that shit. Uh -huh. But, um, you know, love what you do, man. Stay focused. Don't quit. And go as hard as you really want to win. You know what I mean? If you really want to win and you want to see yourself doing amazing things, write that shit down and just believe it. All right, there you go. It's the Dad Paul Show. Ivan Taiki. You already know how that shit go.